Hi guys, welcome to today's session. Today's session is going to be on um, the circle of fullest, but we're going to have a question and answer session. And so if you haven't watched my tutorial session on the circle of fullest, I would encourage you to do so. Okay, so, so let's begin. So the first question, which artery is most susceptible to aneurysm? within the circle of Willis. Which artery is most susceptible to aneurysm within the circle of Willis? So there's a diagram. Uh, there's the circle of Willis. There's the diagram heart. So um, which artery is most susceptible to aneurysm? Okay, so let's look at the answer. So the answer is the anterior communicating artery, anterior communicating artery. So, more often than not, you have very aneurysm occurring within this part of the circle of Willis, the anterior communicating artery. That artery is most susceptible to aneurysms. All right, so let's move to the next question. Question two, a patient presents to the emergency room with a brief loss of consciousness, neck stiffness, complaints of severe headache. A CT scan then revealed a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Which artery is most likely to be affected. The question again, a patient presents to the ER with brief loss of consciousness, neck stiffness, complaints of severe headache, a CT scan done revealed a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which artery is most likely to be affected? So let's, let's look at the answer. So the answer is still the anterior communicating artery, still the anterior communicating artery. So when you have a rupture of the berry aneurysm, it bleeds into the subarachnoid space causing subarachnoid hemorrhage. So usually the patient will come to you complaining of worst headache of their life. They um, would have a history of a brief loss of consciousness and neck stiffness. So this is the third question. Subarachnoid hemorrhage can cause hydrocephalus. Subarachnoid hemorrhage can cause hydrocephalus. Is it true or false? Is this statement true or false? <clears throat> Now, if it's true, explain your answer. If it is false, you have to explain your answer. So <laughs> let's look at what the answer is. So the answer is true. Subarachnoid hemorrhage can cause hydrocephalus. Now, I need you to um, focus on this diagram. Now, before you understand the pathophysiology of um, hydrocephalus secondary to subarachnoid hemorrhage, you need to know the ventricular system of the brain, how CSF moves from the lateral ventricles to the arachnoid villi or the arachnoid granulation. Okay, so this is the arachnoid granulation. This part of the brain absorbs CSF and sends CSF into circulation. Okay, now <clears throat> there's a scan here. Let me show you a CT scan. This is a CT scan in the axial view. Now this thing you see here, at the lateral ventricles. So this is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Now, <clears throat> this is the third ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle. This hyperdense structure you find here is the choroid plexus, what produces the CSF. Now, this hypodense structure here is, is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. So blood, sorry, so CSF moves from the lateral ventricles then it moves to the third ventricle via the foramen of Monroe. Via the foramen of Monroe. Then from the third ventricle, it moves to the fourth ventricle via the cerebral aqueduct. Then from the fourth ventricle, it goes through the two lateral luscus, foramen of lusca, and then the medial magendi. Now from there, it moves all the way to the subarachnoid sorry, the arachnoid villi, then the arachnoid villi absorbs the CSF into circulation. So that's the flow of CSF. Now back to the question, how does subarachnoid hemorrhage cause obstructive hydrocephalus? Two things. The first thing is that you can have coating of the red blood cells. Once there's bleeding into the subarachnoid space, when the aneurysm ruptures and the bleed enters the subarachnoid space, then the red cells can coat this arachnoid villi, <clears throat> once it coats the villi, the villi would, would not be able to absorb the CSF and then 
send the CSF into circulation. So that is one way subarachnoid hemorrhage can cause obstructive hydrocephalus. Another way is that the, you could have the bleed entering the ventricular system to cause the obstructive hydrocephalus. So you can see here in the CT scan, this is the CT scan of a patient. <clears throat> you see within the lateral ventricles, there's this bleed within the lateral ventricles. And you can see here, there's, there's massive dilatation of the ventricle. All that you see here is the bleed occurring within the ventricle. It's very dilated. It's dilated. Okay, so this is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. And you can see the dilatation of the ventricles. So two things. The bleed can <clears throat> coat the arachnoid villi and then prevent the arachnoid villi from absorbing CSF into circulation. The second thing is that there could be bleeding into the ventricular system to cause obstructive hydrocephalus. So let's move on to our fourth question. Which artery connects the left side of the circle of Willis to the right side? Which artery connects the left side of the circle of Willis to the right side? Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the circle of Willis, right? This is the right side, this is the left side. Okay, the artery that connects this side and this side is this artery labeled number two. This artery here, which is the anterior communicating artery, the anterior communicating artery. So the anterior communicating artery links the left side and the right side of the circle of Willis, right? So let's move on to our fifth question. <clears throat> which of the following artery is not part of the circle of Willis? Which of the following artery is not part of the circle of Willis? And here we have some options. A, anterior cerebral artery, B, middle cerebral artery, C, posterior communicating artery, D, internal carotid artery, and E, posterior cerebral artery. Okay, so let's look at the answer. So from this diagram, we know that this is the anterior communicating artery, this is the anterior cerebral artery. Now this big blood vessel you see here, <clears throat> this big blood vessel you see here is the internal carotid artery internal carotid artery. And this branch, this artery you see here is a branch of the internal carotid artery. And as you can see, this artery is outside the circle of Willis. This artery is not forming part of the circle of Willis. The artery labeled number three. So this artery is called the middle cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery. So again, the middle cerebral artery is not part of the circle of Willis, even though it is a branch of the, the internal carotid artery. Because for the internal carotid artery, the anterior cerebral artery is also a branch of the in internal carotid artery. However, the anterior cerebral artery forms part of the circle of Willis, but the middle cerebral artery does not form part of the circle of Willis. Right? I hope that is clear. Okay, let's move on to our next question. Question six. Anterior cerebral artery is a branch of which artery? Anterior cerebral artery is a branch of which Actually, so I said the answer in the previous question. So this, this is the anterior cerebral artery, number one. The one labeled one is the anterior cerebral artery. You can see it's a branch of this big artery here, which is the internal carotid artery, internal carotid artery, okay? So the anterior cerebral artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery. All right, let's move on to the next question. Question seven, which artery is the terminal branch of the basilar artery? Which artery is the terminal branch of the basilar artery? So let's look at the basilar artery. So we know that this two, this is the vertebral artery. <laughs> this is the vertebral artery. You know the vertebral artery comes together to form the basilar artery. So labeled number eight, this big artery here is the basilar artery. <laughs> now, what is the terminal branch? You can see so many branches coming off the basilar artery, the pontine artery is the labyrinthine artery. This artery you see here, number seven, is the superior cerebellar artery. However, that is not the terminal branch. This is the terminal branch. This artery here is the terminal branch. This artery labeled number six is the terminal branch. And that artery is called the posterior cerebral artery. Posterior cerebral artery. All right. So let's move on to the next question. Question number eight. Where is the anatomical position of the circle of Willis? Where is the anatomical position of the circle of Willis? So let's look at the answer. 
So is the interpendicular fossa. So we said this is the interpendicular fossa. This region here, interpendicular fossa. So what you can see here, this structure is the optic nerve. This structure is the optic nerve, and it's crossing to form the optic chiasma. Where my cursor is is the optic chiasma. <clears throat> this structure here is the infundibulum, and then beneath the infundibulum we have the tuber scenario. Then this bulb-like structure here is called the mammillary body. And this structure here is the posterior perforating substance. So this is the region where you find the circle of foliage, the interpendicular fossa. All right, let's move to the next question. Question number nine. Is there mixing of blood within the circle of Willis? True or false? Is there mixing of blood within the circle of Willis? True or false? Explain your answer. Now the answer is false. <laughs> now look, look at the diagram here. So this is the right side, and this is the left side of circle of Willis. You can see that the blood is not mixing. The blood coming from the right side is not mixing with the blood coming from the left side. And it's simply because the pressures within the left and the right are equal. Once it is equal, then blood cannot move from one side to the other side. So there's no mixing of blood simply because the pressures within the arterial system, the left and the right, side are all equal so that's the reason now the last question the last question <clears throat> so if if you've been following uh, just to recapitulate um number one but just to label the part number one is the anterior communicating artery we said that the anterior communicating artery connects the left and the right side of the circle of fullest the anterior communicating artery connects the left and the right side now, <clears throat> number two, number two here, you can see it's, it's, it's a terminal branch of the basilar artery. So this is the basilar artery, and you can see it's running all the way here. So that's the terminal branch of the basilar artery. So that's the posterior cerebral artery. <clears throat> that's the posterior cerebral artery. That's number two. Number three is the vertebral artery, the left vertebral artery. Number, number three, sorry. Number three is the left vertebral artery. Number four, this big artery here, is the basilar artery. You see, it's lying on this structure called the pons. And on the pons, it's, it's a groove called the basilar groove. So you have the, the basilar artery lying on the basilar groove of the pons. So number four is the basilar artery. And number five, you can see this artery coming off the posterior cerebral artery, this artery here, joining the internal carotid artery. So this artery is called the posterior communicating artery. And number six, <clears throat> you can see, if you look at it closely, you can see that this artery is way outside the circle of Willis. And we said that the artery that is outside the circle of Willis is the middle, mini, sorry, middle cerebral artery. Because this big artery here is the internal carotid artery. You can see this artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery. So this is the middle cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery. Thank you very much. And if you were not able to answer most of the questions just go back to my tutorials on the circle of fullest and it will make everything very simple thank you very much for your time thank you very much for your time and i'll see you in the next video kindly like share and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you